How's it going everybody? My name's Eric and in this video I'm going to show you how to set up your MF label DT426B. This thermal printer, we're gonna set it up with Mac. We're gonna set it up with Windows and we're going to set it up with Android and Chromebook. That's the information that you came here for. And if you wanna to get to a specific part of the video, check the description, there is an index and you can jump to whatever device you're trying to install it in after we go over the initial setup and calibration. First and foremost, thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, please give the video a thumbs up. And if you aren't already subscribed to the channel, consider subscribing. If at any point during this video, if you watch the entire video through and your questions were not answered, hit me up in the comment section with a question. I will try my best to answer. Let's get into the setup, calibration, installation, all that fun stuff. So here we have the printer. And if you didn't already know, it does not come with any labels. So you're going to have to purchase some labels off of Amazon. I will put a link in the description to some of my favorite four by six thermal labels. Before we even load the labels, I want to explain to everybody, this is a viewing window to see how many labels you have left. This is a feed slash calibration button that you'll press to feed a label. We'll go over that later. These two levers, you have to press it in in order to open the printer. The front of the printer, there are no teeth to tear. So perforated labels are ideal, but if you have non-perforated labels, if you pull hard enough, they should still rip and come off of the printer like that. Um, nothing going on in the bottom, but if you go to the back, we have a power switch, a micro SD slot, which I actually don't know what it's used for. So if you know what that micro SD slot is used for, please let me know in the comments. We have our power, we got our USB, and then there's a cutout that we don't really know what that does either. First things first, take the power supply that came with your printer and plug it into the back. You also should have a power cord that goes into the power supply. And then the end of this power cord goes into the wall. And once the power is supplied to the printer, you can turn it on, which is this line position. And it should start beeping, making some noises. And it's gonna make some noises looking for labels, but we're gonna open it up and install our labels. It comes with this spool thing that you don't wanna lose because if you lose it, you'll have to drop in a chopstick to hold your roll. But here I have a roll of four by six thermal labels. I'm going to open it up, place it in like that. It does take almost the entire width of the roll holder and then I'm going to drop it in there. The surface of the label needs to be facing up because the print head is on top. That's what makes contact with the paper. I'm going to open up these print guides a little bit and then close them so the paper is guided, but it's not super duper tight. And then I'm gonna pull the paper forward and close the top of the printer. And as you can see, when I close the top of the printer, it kind of moved it around a little bit. And I think it's auto calibrating when it does that. So I'm gonna press that button and see if it feeds exactly one label. And as you can see, it did. I'm gonna remove this roll and sh I'm gonna remove this roll and show you a different type of label that will still work with this printer. And what I'm talking about is this giant roll. However, it doesn't fit inside of the printer. It's too big. So the solution is some sort of roll holder in the back. Then you feed the labels through that slot, pull it through those feed guides onto the platen roller, close your top. And it should calibrate just like it did before, but that allows the printer to use, that allows the printer to use this labels behind it system. Or if you were to use a fan fold amount of labels, which kind of just plops behind it. Fan folds are a little bit cheaper because they don't have to be rolled. Um, last but not least for setup, I wanna show you a smaller roll getting installed in here because you're not limited to just four by six labels. You can use another size of labels, so I'm going to use these 62 millimeter wide labels. So I'm gonna pull these together, and I want to get this in the center, kind of like that. When I install those labels, it makes a weird noise. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but it seems like it calibrated it automatically and I just have to press the button and it will feed one single label. Another way to calibrate this printer is you're going to switch it off, hold the front button, switch it on, it's going to make a beeping noise and turn red and then you release it and it will do longer calibration and spit out some labels that you can save just by rolling back into the machine. 
and you should be good to go. We're actually gonna go back to the four by six labels for the installation because that's normally what most people I think are going to be using this printer for and we're going to be doing test prints in four x six format. So that's just what we're gonna need. And when I went back to the four x six labels from the smaller labels, I will have to manually calibrate it. For some reason, it's not doing the auto calibration. So I'm just going to manually calibrate it and then we should be good to go back in four x six. Anytime you change labels, you're gonna to need to tell the printer what size they are by calibrating it. Otherwise, you're going to get weird prints or it's only going to send out half of the label or so. And it's gonna be very, very frustrating for you. Now that the labels are installed, four x six is calibrated. We're gonna go into the Mac. I'm going to show you guys how to install it on the Mac, which is actually, I guess, technically a hack. The Amazon listing of the company that's privately labeling this printer and selling it in America, it says that it's not compatible with Mac. So we're breaking the rules here. Now that we're getting ready to install this in the computer, you're gonna grab your USB cable. You're going to plug the A port into the back of the printer with the USB logo pointed up. You're gonna take the USB side of the cable and depending on what kind of computer you're using, you can plug this directly in, but we're gonna be working on a newer MacBook Pro and I have to use a converter in order to get this into a USB-C port. I will put a link to a converter in the description if you are interested in that because that is unfortunately something that you need for a MacBook. So I'm gonna plug this bad boy in and I will see you guys in the computer. running Mac OS Catalina 10.15.2. So what you're gonna have to do is plug in the printer, then you're going to have to install the printer, and then we're gonna have to do some test prints and change some settings, or at least know how to change settings for your own specific purpose. I already have the printer plugged in. I will put a link in the description to the driver. This is very, very important because it's basically the instructions that the computer uses to communicate with the printer. Click on that link in the description that brings you to the driver. Once you get to here, you're going to go over here and hit download. It's gonna come up with this because it's so big it can't scan it. You're gonna download anyways. It'll download the driver zip package. So my download took about 30 seconds. Now I'm going to click on that zip file. It's going to unzip it and then open in your downloads folder. I have it right here. It's the ITPP 941 driver CD. Double click on that, go to Mac. We're gonna go to label printer driver version 1.1.dmg. Double click on that. It's going to open this and then you're going to double click on this label printer package. And then you're gonna get this exclamation point because it's not from a Mac OS verified developer. Apple likes to control things. They don't want things that are being developed outside of their control, but we're gonna have to change some settings in order to install this. We'll go down to system preferences. That pops up, I'm just gonna hit okay. Go to security and privacy. Go to general if you're not already on general. And then we get the where we can allow this to be opened. It was blocked because it was from an unidentified developer. So we're gonna hit open anyways, open, but it should allow you to then open that installer, which is down here. I'm gonna click on that and it's opened the driver installer. Continue, install. Now it's asking for password. I'm gonna type that in, I'm gonna install it. Installation was successful. I'm gonna hit close. Okay, move to trash, that's fine. And then now we're going to actually install the printer. That was the software that we need to install the printer. Now we're going to install the printer. You can go to this finder up here and type in printer and scanners, double click on that. It's gonna come up with your printer and scanners installation setting. Hit this plus button right here and you should see the MF label DT426B. If it's plugged in, turned on on your computer. Now we're going to go down here to where it says choose a driver. We're gonna go to select software and this filter right here, you're gonna type in label, type in label and you're gonna use this label printer label driver and hit okay. Then you're going to hit add. That installed the printer. Now we're gonna have to get a test label I have some over at fulfilledmerchant.com. They're not the greatest test labels, but it's something in four by six that you can print really quick. 
and it's easily accessible. Put a link to that in the description. On this blog post, just click on here. I'm gonna hit Command P. You can also go File Print, and you're gonna want to make sure the MF label printer is picked, and then we're gonna make sure our settings are correct. Drop down more settings, and we're gonna change to four by six. That looks a lot better. We don't really need headers and footers. Now I'm going to hit print. You're gonna wanna pull it up to rip it because they don't have teeth on it. It just, that it rips easier that way. There is our sample label. As you can see, this printer does indeed work with Mac. If it's not dark enough, you can go to more settings, print using system dialog, show details. Then you go to this layout drop down, printer features, and then you can have feature sets, printer settings, and you can change your darkness a little bit more uh, and you can change your print speed. There is a balance between speed and darkness that you might wanna play with if yours is not printing well. If the darkness is too high and the print speed is too fast, it might error out and overheat. It just is something you're gonna to have to play with. Maybe turn the darkness up one or two if you need to, and you can turn your printer speed a little bit down or up and just keep printing sample labels until you get the, uh, the perfect balance for your label. If you have a specific label size that is not in the defaults, so if none of these are your label size, you can go to manage custom label size, create your own label size right here. You can name it whatever you want if it's like a fragile sticker. And the fragile stickers you're printing are four by four. You can do that. You don't really need marginal non-printable areas, so you could go all that to zero and then hit okay and you would have this custom size even though they already have four by four but that's just how you do custom dimensions for a label that you might need to do in the future depending on how you're gonna be setting up that printer. That's pretty much the tutorial for Mac. If you haven't already, please give the video a thumbs up and let's get into a PC. All right, here we are on a Windows computer. I have not yet plugged in my printer because sometimes Windows can be a little funny if you plug it in and it just starts to auto install and it doesn't pick the right driver and it could put you in a mess. So plug your printer in until we already install the driver and it tells us to plug it in. I'll put a link to the driver in the description. It is a Bartender Seagull driver. It's a great driver to use this printer. I'll put a link to this in the description. You're gonna hit download. Once it's done downloading, you're going to click that exe or navigate to your downloads folder and find the file and execute that exe. You're going to accept their license agreement. You're going to hit next, run driver wizard. You don't really need to read the installation instructions if you don't want to, you can uncheck that and then hit finish. There's going to be a little blinking shield that you're going to click. And then this doesn't record on the screen, but it asks me if I wanna allow this app to make changes. I'm going to hit yes. And then it's going to launch. Down here is a driver wizard. I'm gonna click on that. We're going to install printer drivers. How is this printer going to be attached by USB? And now I'm going to plug the printer in and it should pop up right here that the driver for a plug and play printer if you plugged it in at the right time and haven't previously plugged it into your computer. If you had previously plugged it into your computer and it was not working, you could go down here to printers and scanners, and then you should see the, uh, you might see the MF label printer and you would just click on it and remove, dev remove device. Then it might pop up on your installer wizard. We're going to leave that checked and hit next. MF label DT426B, it already recognized everything. We're gonna hit next. Virtual port USB 0001, next. And then printer name, that's fine. Hit next, hit finish. All right, you should get a success message. Then you're going to hit close. And before we do anything, we're going to go into printer 
and scanner system settings and look for the MF label DT426B. We're gonna go to manage printing preferences. And then here is our driver kind of settings page. We're gonna go to graphics and make sure that dithering is on none, which is what you want it to be. Your page setup, if you're going to be using a four by six label, make sure it's on four by six. Or if you're using any of these dimensions or need a custom dimension, you can go to new. Most likely you're gonna be using die cut labels. That means it's individual stickers. Then you can change your label dimensions right there for your own customization and name it whatever you want. And that should come up as a custom in the printer dialog. So I'm just gonna make one real quick and just call custom. Let's see if it does millimeter. It does do millimeter. So you can type in millimeter and it will convert it automatically to inches. I didn't know that. So we're gonna make that like 69 by 29 millimeter and it looks, look at that. It even gives you a preview and then it will convert it to inches. Very cool, I'm gonna hit okay. This is just for example, I'm not gonna be using this exact dimension for anything. I'm gonna hit apply, but we're gonna keep it at four by six for our first uh, test print. You can throw a test print right here from the page. You can throw the test page right there. It will send a test print to the printer and that'll give you some text, but we're gonna do a barcode print. And I have a website going on right now. It's very primitive. It's called fulfilledmerchant.com. And I do have a link to this in the description. It's a four by six test print. You just click on the blog, click on that print page, and then you can hit command P, get your print dialog popped up. That doesn't look good. We're gonna have to do some changing. So we're gonna go to destination, see more and make sure your MF label printer is picked. More settings, make sure it's four by six. Uh, don't really need header and footers on this specific label. And then we're going to hit print. And there we are, just like that, set up on Microsoft Windows. Don't forget, you're going to have to go into any specific platform that you're using. You're gonna to have to change the label settings to four by six, because normally they're going to be on eight and a half by 11. And then you're gonna start printing out junked up sideways if you just try to send that to the printer. So I will put a link to that video in the corner and in the description. It specifically shows you in each platform where to go on settings to change it to four by six, just to save you some headache and to not have to waste labels. and think that your printer's broken when it's really just a settings issue. Now that we're done with Windows, I'm just gonna show you really quick how I'm printing on an Android device. It would work on an Android phone or an Android tablet even. I hope you didn't buy this printer hoping that it would work with iOS, but it doesn't. But here's how it works with Android. I have a full tutorial I will link in the corner there and hopefully that will help. It's a different printer, but the process is exactly the same that I'm gonna show you guys right now. So if I am missing something in this quick walkthrough, talk through, then go to that video and hopefully that will have a little bit more detail that I might be missing in this quick walkthrough. USB-C cable goes into phone. Make sure it's plugged all the way in. You should get this pop-up. I'm gonna click Noco Print. It's an app that I've already downloaded. And then I'm going to go to my uh, test print, which is fulfilledmerchant.com. There's my test label. I'm gonna click on that in a new window. I'm gonna hold down, download that image, open that image, three dots at the top, open with Noco Print. And there you can see there's our print dialog. It initially, when you install the printer, you're going to have to pick a manual driver and you're gonna pick Zebra ZP450. It works with this printer, not sure why. Call it a hack, call it magic. There's my ad, it was really annoying. I told you there's ads on these, so annoying. Uh, there's our print image again. We're just gonna hit print. It's gonna send the job to the printer. And there is our sample label there is a paid version of Noco Print, so you don't get these annoying ads. I would recommend that because the ads are actually really, really annoying. I haven't tested this printer on Google Chromebook yet, but I have a tutorial in the corner and in the description showing you how to install a different printer, but it's the same process, the same PPD file as this printer, and that should be allow you to get this working on a Google Chromebook. Unfortunately, on Chromebook, you don't have uh, setting adjustments for darkness. You just, just can adjust the dimensions. So that is the 
all-in-one tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this video installation. If you have any questions about this printer or about the workflow, put them in the comments section. Thank you guys again for watching. If you haven't already, please give the video a thumbs up and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye. Thank you.